So today I have with me a nice Cherokee 6300. We've had this plane on a 2,000 mile cross country, took it up and over the Rocky Mountains. It flies really nice. This particular video isn't going to be a full review, but we do have some interesting tidbits and facts of the plane. And then at the end of it, we did try to go ahead and shoot an ILS approach in our flight portion, but with the traffic in the pattern, they ended up scooting in front of us. We ended up having to abort the approach a little early. In this video, we're going to take you around the exterior, interior, engine, panel, specifications, and performance of this Cherokee 6. And of course, we'll take you along for our signature flight and landing portion as well. This is a 1967 Cherokee 6 with a somewhat rare seven passenger seating. Overall, it's in beautiful condition for the year. It's got a newer paint scheme, very clean interior, and some nice upgrades. The Cherokee 6 300 is a true load hauler. It is a useful load higher than some light twin engine airplanes. The plane has great space and a great cargo loading capacity. Now since it is a fixed gear airplane, you have lower insurance and maintenance costs, and it only flies just a little slower than the retractable gear Lance that flies about 10 to 15 knots faster than this one. There is no other fixed gear airplane that has the capacity and seven seats in this price range. The Cessna 207 is a very nice plane, but for a much higher price. This plane can take off and land in very short runways and grass strips. This particular plane has the more desirable 300 horsepower engine. Some models came with the 260 horsepower engines, and this plane also has an expensive three blade propeller upgrade. It'll give you better climb rate as you'll see in the flight section of the video, and the cabin is quieter. This plane flies really nice. We flew it over a 2,000 mile cross country trip up and over the Rocky Mountains. We also did some very useful upgrades and some necessary maintenance items to the plane since we got it. It is an IFR certified plane with no damage history and all logs since new. The three-tone paint scheme on this plane look, makes it look very modern, and overall the paint is in really nice condition. The dark blue color is actually a metallic blue. And the only thing I noticed is some very small touch-ups that could be done, and then a little bit of paint on the tail plastic where there's some lines if you look closely in the plastic. They're hardly noticeable, but as you know, we like to mention anything we notice. Now this plane is for sale. You'll find the link for the listing down in the description below. Let's take a look at the engine on this Cherokee 6. As you can see, it is a six-cylinder Lycoming IO540 300 horsepower engine. Now this family of engines are very reliable and they've actually been used in about 87 different models of aircraft, so they're well distributed as well. There's been quite a bit of upgrades and when we get an aircraft in, we go through it, we check it out, and we make sure that all of the repairs and maintenance have been done. And even if it's not something that's necessarily due right at that particular point, we'll go ahead and do it as well which includes on this particular one we installed GAMI fuel injectors, we've got new spark plugs, and we also did the mag on it, a new alternator, and a new fuel pump. The compressions on this are great compressions on all cylinders. You can see it's very clean throughout. There are numerous probes in here because we did install a JPI digital engine monitor is very good for running um, the air engine smoothly and even being able to use it lean of peak if you chose to. Taking a look at the front, as you can see, it does have a Hartzell three-blade propeller, and this particular propeller is a fairly expensive upgrade, but it works really well with this six-cylinder engine and helps the performance on it as far as in flight. When you come and take a look at the back side of the aircraft, you can see that this is our cargo configuration. It literally takes about three minutes to pull all five of the rear seats out and turn it into a cargo configuration. And then after that, if you need to have a couple of passengers, you can adjust the seats, which ones you want in and out as you go. One of the really nice benefits of having this is that the front door slides open and then this back part lifts up the interior space but you have the door space to get just about anything in there. When we take a look at the size of the cabin, the height in there is actually four feet one inch from the floor up to the top. The width is at three feet five inches and then the total length comes out to ten feet five inches. So the volume in there you have 149 cubic feet of space and on top of that this door opens three feet by three feet. So you can fit just about anything 
in there. When the seats are installed in any configuration, you have six point audio plugs. So there's two on that side, there'll be two on this side, and then the two up front. All of the seat belts as well as the cargo straps to put any type of cargo that you need to transport with you secure down your baggage and it makes it very easy for the passengers to get in and out from the side. Little hat rack shelf up there for something that you don't want squished when you put it in. When you're going to install the seats, they're actually all very lightweight. You can really lift them up by one hand. They fold in easy so that you can slide them in. And all you have to do is pop the front ones in to slide it in. And then the back part, it just pops right down and in. No screws or any type of hardware needed to do the installation. So when I was talking about how easy the seats are to install, if you take a look, you literally just have to line up these two pegs in the front to make sure that they're in the little groove, slide them forward, make sure that the seat belt is out of the way, and just pop the two pegs back here, and it's already fixed, attached, and ready for flying. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our video today. As always, we ask that you take the time to like our video, subscribe to our channel, so one of our pre-flight steps is obviously to drain the fuel checking for water. Now each tank on the wing does have its own fuel drain right under the tank, but there's also a center drain, so you want to make sure that you're selecting each tank one at a time, and usually you start on one side and work your way around. So you select the drain, the fuel tank that you want, you come back here, and you open this little lev port, and then you're going to push down on this little lever, and go to the next one and we've got a bucket underneath the drain so that we can catch the fuel and check it and usually you're checking in, to be in between each one to see where if any water particles are coming out where they might be but we do that on all four tanks and then go underneath and check the bucket. We're looking for any of the particles, any water, anything like that coming through the main valve line. Let's go ahead and we'll take a look at the panel on the Cherokee 6. So we start on the left side here. We've got our standard six pack of gauges across the center right in front of the pilot's seat. We do have a clock with the second hand, um, important for instrument. We have a magnetic compass over here. And then we also have dual VOR CDIs. One is a Garmin, one is a Bendix King. And so the top one is primary connected to our GPS and then the secondary connected to our backup radio. The center stack, as you can see, has a PS Engineering PMA 7000B audio panel, a Garmin GNS 430 WAS GPS, this actually will show traffic. We've got KX155 Navcom. And then we also have a DME, which does turn on. So then we believe that that's working as well. Down here, we have a digital engine monitor that shows all six cylinder head temps, exhaust gas temperatures. You've got manifold pressure, RPM. You've got your fuel quantity used and remaining voltage, oil pressure, oil temp fuel flow, everything is nice and easily accessible and viewable right here. And over here we've also got a backup GPS. It's easy to remove and take out to do some updates and flight planning and stuff and then pop that in. And then underneath we actually have a third backup radio. It's an ICOM ICA200. And then finally down here on the bottom we've got a Garmin transponder for our ADS-B. The factory EGT gauge is here and that is in working condition. And then if we move over to the far right here, we have our manifold pressure and our RPM and our fuel flow in the factory gauges. So the JPI is really easy to see on the from the left pilot seat, but your factory gauges are over here for fuel flow, your RPM and your manifold pressure. Over here we've got our gyro suction indicator and then our primary fuel gauges to show each of the individual tanks and the fuel quantities. And then our oil pressure, oil temp, fuel pressure, and our alts and amps right there. So it's got a cigarette lighter, we've got our defrost and our cabin heat, you've got your mixture, your prop, and your throttle, 
all pretty self-explanatory. We do have a parking brake down here, a nose trim option right here, our fuel selectors for the left and right main, and then the right tip, left tip, and an off selector, which has this detent that you have to push down so it's kind of a safety not to go into off while in flight. Let's take a look at the interior and the seat configuration on the Cherokee 6. So we've got your two main seats up front here, lots of leg room, lots of shoulder space for the two front um, pilot and co-pilot, your yokes with your push to talk option available. All you do is fold the seat forward. It gives you very easy access into the middle row of seats. The middle row here actually has three. With this center seat in here, it makes it a seven place aircraft, which is somewhat unique to find in the Cherokee 6 model. The center section has nice armrests on both sides, the audio jacks on either side, and then taking a look at just all of the plastics throughout the interior, including in the headliner. You can see just how clean it is. It shows just how well maintained the plane has been. And then here we have our vent and our light for each position. So all six of the main seats has their own light and venting system for the colder air intake in the summer months. And then also in the back row and in the middle row, if you look down here at the very bottom on the floor, there are side vents as well for the heat to come in by your feet. So it keeps them warm and keeps your passengers warm as well. So if we take a look at the flap on here, we've got this manual Johnson bar in the center and that has three settings. The first is 10 degrees, 25 degrees, and finally, 40 degrees of flap, so a very nice flap setup. Let's take a look at the specifications and performance of the Cherokee. It has a 300 horsepower engine, a very high useful load of 1,510 pounds, which is quite high for a single engine airplane. The fuel capacity is 84 gallons, and almost all of that is usable fuel. A higher power setting at max cruise of 75% power, it'll burn about 16 gallons per hour and only burns about 12 gallons an hour when you draw back to about 55% power. Now since these planes can carry such large payloads, the performance is going to vary with the weight. I've got two columns for performance on this grid. The first column shows the full gross weight of 3,400 pounds, while the second column shows 2,900 pounds because most of the time the plane doesn't fly at full gross so the 2,900 pounds is a bit more average weight for most flights. In the video we're also using knots but here I've used miles per hours because that's what's used in the pilot operating handbook. I've highlighted in green the areas that have an effect based on the weight difference. The plane can take off and land in very short runways and grass strips because the takeoff distance is only 700 feet and the landing distance is 630 feet when at full gross weight. At 2,900 pounds, it only needs 490 feet to take off and 540 feet to land. These are amazing numbers for a plane of this size. Then you can climb out at 100 to 105 miles per hour after takeoff. The plane has a very high service ceiling. At full gross, it can climb up to 16,250 feet, and it can even go as high as 20,000 feet if it's only at 2,900 pounds. But now please remember that these are not high altitude airplanes. As with most any normally aspirated airplane, a good cruise altitude ranges between 8 to 12,000 feet. The Cherokee 6 has over 1,000 mile range in economy settings. I usually plan for a little bit less because of fuel reserves. But this plane does have GAMI injectors and a digital engine monitor, so you can easily fly lean of peak and get the best possible range. The climb rate is 1,050 feet per minute at full gross and 1,350 feet per minute at 2,900 pounds. These are the standard sea level temperature altitude and standard temperatures. So this number will vary based on your location and the temperature. The max cruise speed is around 170 miles per hour or 147 knots. So getting ready to start, one of the things is putting the trim to the neutral position. We've got our fuel selector to a main tank, throttle at a quarter inch.
the prop in first, master on, fuel pump on, and then we're looking at the fuel flow here as we push the mixture in. Then we'll pull the mixture back out. Run-up on this plane is done at 2,000 RPM. Notice there's just a small drop when we do the mag check. Then we cycle the prop and all of our engine parameters are in green. Having the digital engine monitor right in the middle makes it very easy to monitor all the cylinders and all of the engine parameters, not only doing your run-up but also in flight. Takeoff is done with 10 degrees of flaps. The fuel pump is turned on and the plane will fly at around 70 miles per hour. Your best climb out is at between 100 to 110 miles per hour. Then flaps up and go ahead and climb out. You can put the nose down and get a higher speed for better forward visibility as well. I've also recorded the climb out on the iPad. As you can see, the plane was climbing at 1200 to 1500 feet per minute, and this isn't even the best angle of climb. We're not at full gross weight, the three blade propeller and the colder weather has contributed to this higher climb rate. We had some clouds in front of us with some possible ice, so even with lower power settings we were able to climb up and over them at a thousand feet a minute to get above the clouds. We've set the engine for 75% power. It's very helpful to have a digital engine monitor. It not only shows all the engine information, it even calculates the percentage of horsepower, which varies based on multiple facts. This helps to avoid running the engine at harmful settings. At the 75% power, and even at this low of an altitude, the plane flies at about 170 to 175 miles per hour with true airspeed. At higher altitudes, you can get even better speeds. With our tailwind component, we're getting 170 plus knots on the ground speed. One of the ways to find out how well an airplane handles is to fly it on a precision approach. A good, balanced airplane can handle a low speed precision approach very well. Doing a practice ILS for 27 low approach only. So we decided to fly the ILS approach to runway 27 at Valparaiso. It was a windy and gusty day, but it was easy to handle and fly the plane precisely. You've got the Garmin WAS GPS so you can fly all RNAV approaches including LPV. It's just the database that needs to update, and we don't update the databases since there isn't any way to transfer that over to the new owner. So we dialed in the ILS on both nav radios, and both indicators are CDIs with glide slopes. The plane flew very nicely. It held the intercept altitude of 2,600 feet steadily, and it was descending on the glide slope nicely. Some planes can't do this well with a gusting crosswind. I had a similar approach in a different plane just a week ago with similar wind conditions and it was a struggle to fly the approach precisely. This is actually a great stable IFR airplane. Okay, I can't see them. I don't know where they are. They're left. We actually had to abort the approach because of some traffic that I couldn't see in the pattern was turning right in front of us. Porter County traffic, Cherokee, 1-8 Whiskey, going missed, left turn before the runway for the traffic inbound, Porter County. Uh, we've got the traffic uh, inside. Thank you, guys.
So you approach at about 90 miles an hour, slow it down to 80, and then land with the slowest possible speed. Fuel pump should be on. Today we had 20 knots gusting crosswinds, so we only used 10 degrees of flaps and kept up a little bit higher speed. One important thing to remember is that the nose wheel is quite a bit in front of the cockpit on this plane and that the engine is also further forward. So you need to make sure you trim and hold that nose up as long as you can in the landing to make for a smooth landing. This was a good landing considering the winds and the gusts, but you can land much better with this plane and much smoother than this in a normal condition. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video today. As always, we ask that you take a moment to like our video, subscribe to our channel to see future videos like this, and of course, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. We'll do our best to answer them.